I am Venom. Just kidding. It's Dr. Michael Morbius <laughs> at your service. <laughs> Welcome to the Sunday Movie Marathon. I'm Dr. Michael Morbius. I'm Venom. I'm Jared Leto. And it's episode 74.5. We bamboozled mm. you all. You thought it was going to be 75. Nope. Not this time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next time. We'll see. Maybe it'll be 74.6 yeah. next time. Yeah, we fucked up. With, well, I say we. I fucked up with the timings this <laughs> week, so we didn't have enough time to watch the show and ready for this episode. So Yeah, it turns out Chris is a busy, busy boy. Yeah. Mm. So Last week's been constant, and so is this week coming as well. So Yeah. So here we are talking about <laughs> <laughs> not the the musical one, but the the non musical ones, the new the ones movies. without music, mm. and not made by Disney. We're talking about some movies in a bonus episode, so nobody can get mad if it sucks because <laughs> it's a bonus one. So yeah. we're doing mm. the 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 French one, Paris Thirteenth District, and the new. Um, the other one, the North Man, came out. <laughs> the other one. That's that's actually the film that people think of when they hear new the other one. Ah, <sighs> yeah. Mm. Oh wait, just one more thing. So right. I went to see the North Man, and there was a trailer. No, there wasn't a trailer. There was an advert before about Subway, and they fucking they there's this new thing <laughs> at Subway. Okay, I went batshit. They were like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you want crisps in your Subway sandwich, just, like, <clears throat> apparently the guy's going to ask you, apparently a sandwich artist is going to ask you if you want crisps in your Subway sandwich. What has the world come to? Do you know what? I actually saw this advert again last night when I was watching TV, and I couldn't stop laughing because I was just thinking about Max tweeted about it, like, um, it <laughs> like really the morning annoyed after. me. <laughs> what do you mean he's going to ask me? Well, would you like crisps in that? Would... Mm -hmm. What? Apparently there are some people in the world, enough of them to make this a thing, um, that want crisps in their sandwich. Look, I'm not even saying crisps in your sandwich is a bad thing. Mm. Everybody does it from time to time. Uh, but I, have I don't not. want the sandwich artist at Subway asking me if I want to put, if he <laughs> wants, or she, if they want me to have crisps, like, oh, I'll, I'll put crisps in your Subway sandwich for you. Like, why the hell would... I could just do that myself. I yeah. need you, like, eyeing me up, being like, this motherfucker wants more salt, doesn't he? You want, you got crisps in your order, do you? Want me to put them in your sandwich? No. No, I bet. I would do I, that myself. I bet it's going to be one of those, like, um, you know, like in the salad section where they have, like, the sweet corns and sauces and stuff. They're going to have, like, a tray just full of crisps. And they're going to be like, want any salad or crisps? And you can just imagine people just looking at it and just disbelief because how fucking disgusting that would be. The like imagine like yeah like crisps. like stale like air dried crisp and like you don't even get to decide what flavor crisps unless yeah mm. of course you you're buying a packet and then they what yeah they offer to put it in the sandwich for you like I don't have hands. I imagine that's how <laughs> they'll do it. I don't know if they'll have a like a section where the salads and stuff are. Do you know what? Crisp. If anyone yeah. working for Subway. <laughs> Is listening. We want to know. We're um we're disgusted, what is but up we're with curious. This? Yeah. What are you doing? Who campaigned what are for you this? Doing? Yeah. Like... <laughs> anyway, let's not drag this food conversation out. We had Please a food rest. conversation out like <laughs> in the last episode as well. It had nothing to do with movies. I think this is a recurring theme, though. We're uh, straying away from the uh, movies. We don't really even like movies anymore. I think we should turn this into a. Uh, Food discussion. A, yeah, food discussion podcast. Ooh. The Sunday food marathon. Food boy marathon. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't really have quite the same ring no. to it. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, which are, are we going to start with the film that we watch first? Oh, right. Yeah. Like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Who wants to introduce that? Darcy, I think you should because you know a lot about oh, whatever it is. Okay. <laughs> Goes to Letterbox and pulls up no. the movie. <laughs> Sorry, I just pulled up Letterbox and saw that your movie sucks at review shark tale. <laughs> yeah. Right, can start um okay. So we went to go see a film. Felt like fucking forever ago now. It was only like a week ago, wasn't it? A yeah. week ago yesterday. Something like that. Yeah. 
and um, it's called Paris 13th District. Um, apparently it came out last year, but it's only kind of sort of made its way over here because I maybe it's because it's a French movie. I don't know. Yeah, it got like film festival screenings around the world and got a full release recently. Yeah, I'm just looking at reviews that are just like <laughs> French cinema. <laughs> and then that was like the only people that had it last year. So um, how do I even explain this movie? Um, okay, so this movie is based on a couple of um, sequences. They're called like um, uh, they're called Optic Nerve um, by a cartoonist called Adrian Toman. Um, he gathers like all these like anthologies, and he like uh, created like a whole bunch of like books and stuff. And it's like from a couple of those short stories. So uh, there's uh, Killing and Dying. There's Amber Sweet. Um, and then there's another one, but I can't quite remember the other one. Uh, essentially, it's just about these uh, people that kind of meet in these, like, sort of, like, circumstances of which um, they kind of, like, they're, like, friends with benefits, but they're, like, not friends with benefits. And then there's... But basically, because of all these stories, they're, like, they're not connected, but they've somehow tried to connect them in this movie. It's hard to explain um, without spoiling the movie so i think maybe if we spoil the movie now and ask you guys what you think i can start actually deliberating more about what i know about this movie well what is it it's a movie about three people <laughs> who like fuck yeah pretty much yeah. <laughs> trying to find love i guess which is hilarious because um, in the, that's what the movie's about yeah, i don't know the, right. it's very horny it's a very horny movie yeah, yeah well, so that's what you expect french for you that's mm. that's france <laughs> I love to overgeneralize. So yeah, it's about <laughs> it's about French people mm. and they fuck a lot and that's basically what the movie is. It's um Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I hesitate to call it a romance movie. It's more like a kind of a drama. Uh mm. it's in black and white and um looks looks lovely, all like really great uh black and white kind of f- f- filming techniques and all that. Um they go to a club scene and one mm. uh they go to a club. I think that looks awesome. You don't really see club scenes in black and white movies much. It's like, I guess it's not the kind of thing you're used to. I suppose it's like yeah, because it's so bright. It's quite it's modern, to be like, yeah. yeah. And you kind of want like the colours, but with this, um, I think they filmed it all really, really well, and to kind of evoke a a, a definite feeling within the the viewer. I think it's mm. very, um, it's just very nice movie and very lovely to watch. I thought it was all just consistently very. Very nice. Yeah. It's one of those one of those movies with like a lot of vibes, you know. Yeah. Like you you watch it. And like, I guess like either you vibe <laughs> with it. It's like one of, it's one of those vibes type movies. Mm. Um, <laughs> and either you vibe with it, I guess, or you, I I understand why people would like watch this and go, all right, <laughs> that wasn't much of anything, but I don't know. I was just having like a yeah, this... a pretty good time with like the performances and um, how it was shot and yeah, the vibes. Yeah, I think I think it also comes down to they're trying to well they're loosely basing this on like yeah three short stories and when I say they're short stories I mean they're literally like not even ten pages a piece or something so there's there's uh, there's not tons to work with but I think they've managed to somehow I don't know how they managed to interconnect these because they literally have like almost no relevance to each other but I mean I was kind of impressed because I was reading back through the book. I tell you, reading back, I was just like flicking through it the other day, and I was like, "Oh, how did they do this?" Because most of like killing and dying is about um this uh you know the girl in the, the sister who does the stand up performances. Yeah, that's most yeah. of what killing and dying is about. And like Amber Sweet has like a, like a really short bit about how this girl looks like this porn star and how she meets her. But yeah, it, it's kind of like open ended. Like the way that they've uh sort of like wrapped up in the film is quite satisfying compared to the the graphic novel because there's they're just sitting on a field and it's just kind of like oh okay mm. like there's a lot to play with in that aspect but when it comes to the actual like short stories well, uh, because they've kind yeah. of developed a relationship between these two characters and... yeah which they kind of had in the short story but yeah it, it's not like mm. developed because obviously it's like fucking short <laughs> if that makes sense yeah how long is this one it's like a hour uh, and 40 what, this, or something is that like 106 minutes. Yeah, right. So about yeah. an hour 45. Kind of feels like that. Yeah. It's mm, just yeah. like, it doesn't need to do 
too much. I don't know. I wasn't really coming at it from like, oh, I better stay true to these Adrian Toman books <laughs> that I haven't read. And I, I, you know, no, I just kind of took it for what it was. And like, yeah. if you had told me after the fact that, like, and I didn't know that it was based on like a few stories, I would have been like, oh, okay. It's just mm. like a, it's just one thing, I guess. It's not like like mind blowing in the sense of like how it tells a story or no. like how it connects different strands. It's just a good movie. Yeah, I thought it was interesting how it's structured, um, where it's basically like a bunch of different stories that interconnect, and like these same characters go through different things. And I thought that was interesting how they did that, how they basically have these characters have like multiple stories in the film and then connect them all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, originally I thought it was a little bit messy because of what I know of it, but I mean, it kind of, I wouldn't even say messy, but there's just like a lot happening and I feel like trying to do an hour, hour of football, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty contained, but I just think there was bits of it that I just thought were just a bit, I don't even say bloated, but I can't explain it. It's just like... No, yeah, I completely agree. You know what I mean? Like, there was just stuff in it that just felt like didn't really need to be in it. Or was, Mm. like, unnecessary. Yeah, I didn't really feel that way. Um, Because I was just along for the ride, I guess. I'm like, oh, yeah. It's, like, about love and understanding what or who you should be putting love into or, like, time into. And I'm like... I'm such a sucker for that kind of thing. Yeah, I can never (laughs) tell with Max, because we were... I was sitting in the middle... And I felt like both of you were having a really shit time, and it was just me like, oh my no. god, I love this. No, I was having and such like, a great time. And then we left, and Chris was like, I don't know if he liked it, because he's being really quiet. And I was mm. like, oh, I don't know, I don't well, want him yeah. to slate my when Adrian you... Toman movie. <laughs> you know, it's a thing, I don't know, when you finish a movie, you want to like sit in it a bit. Um, mm-hmm. I don't like really, I mean, it depends on the movie, but I usually like sitting with a movie afterwards, or like if it's something that's like affected me to like gauge a, what I feel about it. You can't mm-hmm. just come out of a movie and be like, that was that, and th- this is my rating. It's a whatever out of 10. And mm. like that's all I need to know about how it affected me, because I now have this number in my head, I guess. Um, so I don't know. Like If I was quiet afterwards, I guess I was just kind of trying to take it all in. Yeah, yeah. I, think I, I sometimes get like that. Sometimes I even know instantly what I think of a film. Or someone be like, what did you think of that? And usually the first thing I say is, I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to sit on things a bit more rather than like the second the film's credits come up rating on that box. Yeah. I'm trying to sit on <laughs> it. Thought, like, hey, it was definitely good, but is it like as good as this or as good as this, you know? Oh no, I, d- I yeah, I, d- I don't feel like but then if you have other films to like compare it to, then I guess that's something that you could do. But I mean I mean in this instance I know that there there isn't really anything to like do that with but the story the story's not like super original if that's what we're gonna get at but that doesn't really matter no it doesn't need to be super original it's just um i think it's like it's very much a vehicle for like the the filmmaking or mm. also like the acting as well which i thought especially from the three leads were really great um i haven't really seen two of them before i've seen uh nomi Malant in portrait of a lady yeah. on fire oh yeah yeah Oh, she's so good. Yeah, <laughs> like, as soon great. as she showed up, I didn't know she was in the movie. No, as soon as she showed up, I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> I didn't know any. Like, I didn't know anyone who was going to be in this film. Yeah. I purely just went on the basis that I knew what the story was going to be, and I was like, "Ooh, this could be something." There's a um a singer called Jenny Beth who was in the movie. Mm-hmm. And I had no clue she was in it. I really, really like her music, so I was really excited. She played to see Am- her show. She played Amber. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was fun. And I she was great. Lot. She's mm. I don't think she's acted before and she really pulled off the role. She, yeah, definitely. Is she French then? Yeah. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I was yeah, like, everyone's oh, French. Everyone's French is so <laughs> eloquent. <laughs> of course, because they're French. <laughs> I do like the integration of like um the different languages, I guess, because it's not just French, it's um it's a character of uh Emily. Emily Wong in the movie, who's played by Oh, Lucy um, Zhang, who's uh, um, what language was it? I can't remember. I want to say Japanese. I thought it was I could like Viet- be wrong. I thought it was Vietnamese or something. I can't remember. Uh, um, I don't know. I'm sorry, um, but I do like like the integration of like those different types of languages and how it was kind of an experiment with like how people communicate with each other and like how 
like how you get on with one another and these different types of scenarios where like I guess she was um her and Camille were like having sex when like they moved in together and then like there was like a disconnect when they realized they didn't really want that like to go any further I suppose um I think she spoke like a bit of um I don't know I'm sorry I can't it's just another language um every so often like they had to get her in to translate for um this guy that they that they had with their um their agency I thought that was all really interesting especially like the dynamics between um all three of them and like more especially like when they're all in like the same room together you get this tension because uh who did Nemi Malant play Nora when like Emily and Camille are like in that uh party and they're like really getting on you see like the the tension and the jealousy yeah that bit is like super super tense <laughs> Yeah, I thought one of them was going to go over and kill the other one. I was waiting for it. I'm actually disappointed that nothing happened. I really liked um, the way they um, explored um, Nora's, like... <laughs> so, sorry, just Chris go, Nora, like, holding his phone I don't have my face. glasses on. So. <laughs> um, yeah, I really liked how they explored her kind of coming to terms with her sexuality. Um, the whole Amber Sweet. Um, story in the film was probably my favorite bit because of that it's kind of like a character who is in this um, heterosexual relationship and is having sex but isn't really getting any pleasure out of it at all and then realizes that maybe she actually isn't into guys at all mm. i thought that was really interesting she was convinced she was boring yeah i'm like, um, just having sex with this guy but i'm just like not into it i must be really boring it's just like nah it's just not what you're into, I guess. It it's like not for you, sweetie. Like, <laughs> pretty interesting moment when like they have sex for the last time. She's like, and that was the last time, Camille. Goodbye forever. <laughs> like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether I felt bad for him or not. I actually thought he was really like... um. He was kind of a dick. Yeah, he was he really was frustrating. Like Every time he was speaking, I was just like, oh god, here we I go. I think that was kind of the point of the character, though. Mm-hmm. He's meant to be a bit unlikable it's meant to be quite complicated that's where his arc lies right yeah um, probably i guess it was like trying to figure out what he wants from life and like if him and uh, emily were like maybe not meant to be but like but probably not supposed to hate each other or Mm. and like there was a really sweet part of the end that was like that's exactly how it should have ended was like him uh, accompanying her to her aunt's funeral it's like, if it he doesn't show up, he's going to be the biggest dick ever. <laughs> yeah, no, but, that's what I thought. But he did, and I was like, that's like the perfect way to end it. And I like, got choked up. It was really sweet. Yeah, that was great. Really killer soundtrack as well. Lots of great electronic songs I thought was, were used very well. Yeah. It felt very French. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, <laughs> which is, definitely. Which is a weird thing to say, because it is. <laughs> it's a super <laughs> French movie, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to explain if you haven't seen it, but it just sounds <laughs> Yeah. No, it was bopping when the credits roll, um, like at the beginning when the credits are going up and like mm. they're kind of like in sync with the music because they kind of like pop up on the screen. It was all really good editing, I thought. Um, yeah, yeah, I was, I was just bopping along. I really love the music. I thought, <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? I probably probably get the Blu-ray and I'd watch this at home. Like, it, absolutely, I think it's like a really, it's like a very investing movie. Mm. Um, it goes by quite quickly. Um, especially like if you're more engaged with what's going on, which I was. I liked the uh, parts where at the beginning all the um, like actors and actresses' names were like popping up on the screen, and I just said, "Oh, nice!" And then there was me like, oh, "Adrian Tolman, my boy!" Like, <laughs> like you guys were getting all like, "Oh, this person's in this film," and I was like, "I don't give a fuck about these people." <laughs> yeah. Also, um, I was excited when I saw Celine Siama come up as one of the writers mm-hmm. of the film. I had no clue yeah, she see, was involved. I, 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 I just didn't. Do you know what? I'm happy about it though, because it was a, it was a good enough movie. Like I've, um, I follow my boy on uh, Instagram, and I swear to God, I've never seen so much like publicity come for this man. Like literally every two seconds, he's posting about this fucking movie now, because everyone's like, you know, get little stickers on the books, and it's like oh, you have to read this book and watch this movie. And I'm like, he's finally getting the publicity that I think he... Yeah, does. which is good. It's um, directed by Jacques Oudard, who is like a really, really acclaimed French director. Mm-hmm. I've not actually seen any of his movies before, but I've been meaning to. Yeah. I had no clue he directed it until 
I looked it up afterwards. So I was glad to finally watch one of his films. Yeah, he did The Sisters Brothers. That's yeah. a really good movie. I would recommend that. Um, they gave us like a little sheet about what the movie's about and the kind of credits on it yeah. before we went into the cinema. Um, so that was quite nice. Um, I really think Celine Scammo is like a fantastic writer. Um, yeah, she is. Just like this combined with like my more recent one was of hers was Petty Mama. I thought that was like so well written. I just think she has such a artistic way of like presenting language in, in film. <laughs> but my favourite part of the whole thing was that nobody checked the ticket on the way in, so we could have oh, gotten God, it for yeah. free. Yeah, and you say like, um, <laughs> like he's finally getting the recognition he deserves. Uh, well, actually, um, no, he's he's always been. Uh, I, I, I'm telling a bit of a lie. He's always been sort of known in the in the field, but mm-hmm. like only recently have I seen like people who have never really been interested in like graphic novels and stuff really starting to like get into that mm-hmm. kind of thing. And as a massive like illustration comic book kind of like nerd i'm a big fan yeah i think i he, fucking love it he must be like big in that scene he like, is he people is. are really into that sort of thing know of him he sells his like casual frames for like fucking ridiculous money yeah. i'd get one but i'm too poor for it it's like 400 pound mm. like a sheet fuck that yeah, yeah. No, i looked into it at one point I was <laughs> it's like, ridiculous nope. no that's great i mean but that being said if we hadn't seen this showing when we did, we probably wouldn't have been able to see it. No, I um, I asked a mate um to go with. I'm kind of glad that I didn't now because there's just so much sex and it. it would have been so uncomfortable because mm-hmm. I haven't seen them in a, quite a while. And I was just like, oh, I haven't seen you in a while. You like French art movies? You want to see this sex-filled escapades with me? Um, it was a shame actually because I thought, well, actually no, I didn't think anyone was gonna show it. To be honest, I thought I was gonna have to sit on my laptop. And watch it on Movie Go or something like a fucking mm. sado. So thanks, Chichester, for that ray of light. Yeah, support yeah. your local uh, cinemas, people. It was Especially a sweet like little cinema, more to be fair. Ones. Yeah. It's a good cinema. Yeah, um, I like going there. Um, it's a little out of the way, but not like so mm. far out of the way. Yeah, it's all right for me because it's like right by work. So mm-hmm. if there's something showing after I'm working, I can just go. I found it a bit weird that they were showing that though, because I felt like. But then again, maybe it's just one that is it one of those places that just show all the like the niche. They show films that everything. Know what's, mm-hmm. yeah. They show like all the big movies, um, but they also show loads of smaller niche movies. Um, I think next week they're showing Amelie and an Ingmar Bergman movie. Mm-hmm. They're kind Amelie's of tempted sick. to go see both of them. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. Yeah. Um, I just wish that like I don't know. I don't know the solution really to distributing these smaller movies. I just wish they were more accessible. Because, uh, yeah, yeah, again, if we hadn't have seen this one when it showed, we never would have seen it, um, at least in the cinema. And we would have had to uh, go behind everyone's backs in the industry and uh, 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 steal it from, from, from their hands. Well, in yeah. theory, you, yeah, you, you could buy it, because that's what I was going to do. Mm. But yeah, it was like £15 to stream it. Yeah, and I or thought, for me, when I just can't yeah. be bothered to, like... I don't know. I can't be bothered to like pirate anything because like my my laptop is too slow for it, or like um, if it's something that needs to be rented, then like I'm probably not going to do that. Yeah, it's almost not enjoyable in that sense. But I have to spend I, like fifteen pounds just to rent something. Yeah, because I I just happened to be um back in Luton when um I saw that they were showing it up in London, and I was like, well, I'm not that far from London, but then it would cost me like twenty pounds to get there. Fifteen pound to watch the movie, <laughs> and I thought by the time I've finished it, it'll spend like forty pound just to watch this film. And I thought, <sighs> yeah. as much as I don't want to rent it, it is the easiest option. It's just, um, I think there's uh, the audience for foreign movies is still quite slow, um, quite small. Sorry, compared to non-foreign yeah, movies. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I it's mean, a shame because it is like, a shame, but it's. I think it's not really going to change either. Like, what was it? Fucking I Parasite thought it would, One. Yeah, mo- I thought it like, would change. W- yeah. I thought it would all change when Parasite won Best Picture. Yeah, no, so because I. everyone was complaining about it not being in English, yeah. as if they owe it to you as a K- Korean movie to fucking send it to you in English. Oh, the Westerners just don't want to read subtitles, so we must dub it. No. Fucking learn to yeah, read or don't I mean, watch the film. Obviously, Fuck there off. are foreign movies that a lot of people do love that are of like I think casual film goers enjoy like like mm-hmm. Parasite or Old Boy 
Yeah. Um, these are just like really big movies though. Yeah. You know? It's just a yeah, shame. But, that... Yeah, we're just we're I mean, we're just talking about I just don't think it's gonna change. I really don't see um the general public get into grips with like watching subtitled films. I really don't see it happening. We're too lazy. But I don't know. That also goes with like just smaller movies. Oh yeah, yeah, maybe that too, because that's a fucking shame. Because you'll see like a small movie release mm. come out, was and it, it will show like see... once a, a week uh, <laughs> out of view or something. I want to see True Things. That was showing at the Chichester Cinema. I have no idea what that is. I didn't. Um, oh, so it's a new movie. They show the trailer for it. It's with Ruth Wilson. I thought. Oh, this is the one that quite interesting. But... Max spent ages googling after the trailer was on. Yeah, actually, mm-hmm. no, I remember what you're talking about now. <laughs> yeah, that showed one time, but I couldn't go. So. Guess I'm just not going to yeah. be able to see it for a while. I mean, it's just, it comes down to it a lot of the time. It's just what, they don't have a massive budget to give it mm-hmm. a wide release. No, which I, which is fair enough. But, and I mean, I'm not saying this to like slag off like London or anything, but why does London have to have every single showing of it? What? Yeah. Come on, like bring it down a little bit. It's like like when, there's um, people that don't want to travel all the way to London. It's like last year, the film, the beta test, um, from Jim Cummings, the guy who did Fun the Road, that came out and he was like, Oh, it's screening all across the UK, and it was literally just yeah. showing in London and yeah. nowhere else. I Do you just, think they don't yeah. know like much about I don't think they have much say in the distribution, of course, but maybe um, not. I assume they say London because that's where they'll get the biggest footfall. <laughs> yeah, maybe they think, Oh, London's quite bougie. We were it's showing in to London London's. and Manchester. Ah, it's all over the place. Manchester's a weird one as well, because if you can put it up there, can we at least get one down here, like anywhere? Like, say, I don't know, put it in Southampton. That's still close enough to get yeah, to. Yeah, I mean, put to it be fair, somewhere. Southampton does actually get quite a lot. Yeah, stuff. like, if I can go somewhere that doesn't require me to pay £40 for a train ticket, I'm, <laughs> I'm happy to go. <laughs> when um, The Lighthouse came out, that um, showed in Portsmouth, like, a couple weeks after it came out. And I was like, oh, no, it's not going to show in Portsmouth. So I went to Southampton to watch it. Sometimes mm-hmm. you just got to take the risk. If you really want to see a film, you are going to travel for yeah. it. Like, I really was willing to go to London and travel for this film. But my mum was really, like, hell-bent on me not going because it was, at, like, really awkward times and I had to go to London and come back. And she was like, is it even worth it? And I was like, I want to go and see this. <laughs> well, it worked out in the end. Yeah, yeah. it did. Sometimes it's just the luck of the draw. Mm. That's how we saw the Green Knight. Um, that is true, because we wouldn't have seen the Green Knight either if we hadn't gone that one day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that one screening that I accidentally stumbled upon. Yeah, because yeah, we'd given up on it, didn't we? Mm. we we'd already been like, oh, we're not going to see it now. Oh, Crazy. well. It's on Amazon. Yeah, I know. For nobody to watch it. What a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I've got the 4K now. So what if it's you got in it German? On 4K? Yeah, I've got it on 4K. In oh, German? It's, yeah, I had to get it imported. Oh, so is it actually they didn't in do German? Like the 4K distribution here. No, it, it's like um, you have to like change it to English. Oh right, right, so, I agree, yeah. Oh, okay, but, like, but that's so, doable because, though, like, isn't it? Yeah. Sometimes in that movie, there's like um title cards or whatever for like oh, the yeah. different hats. <laughs> They're all in German. Oh, okay, and fair you enough. can't change that. That's embedded in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> You can't be bad yeah. at that, though. That's just whatever. No, sure. <laughs> I wanted to import um, Titane on Blu-ray, mm-hmm. but all the ones you can get on Amazon are like... Are they the ones that are region locked? Yeah. They're not region locked. They're locked in French. They don't have English subtitles. Oh, mm-hmm. shit. <laughs> so I'll just have to learn French. Yeah. That's not very helpful. <laughs> uh, ratings? <laughs> yeah, sure. We ain't talking about this movie anymore, are we? No, we're, we're, we're uh, bragging on about distribution, mm. which is what we always we do on always this podcast. Do it, yeah. Change it, please. <laughs> we need, like, the VPN of life. We just, we need this to stop. What are we writing this out of? Um, um, do it out of... Um, Go on. Um, do, 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 it, do it out of... Um, <laughs> auntie's funerals. Cool. Okay. I'm pretty sure it was her grandma, but we can go with auntie no, it was if her you aunt. want. It was it was like her great aunt. It was a someone. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really liked this movie. Um looking forward to checking out more of Jacques Oudard's movies. And I definitely think I'm gonna check out some of Adrian Toman's work because I, I really liked the writing. Darcy brought um I brought the Killing book, and Dying um, back. with her 
when she went home last. So yeah, I I have every single book that he's done, but I didn't want to bring them all back with me because that would have been really heavy. <laughs> I love reading graphic novels, so looking forward to giving that a go. Mm. Um, yeah, I think it's a really great movie. I give it eight aunties' funerals out of ten. Cool. I love this actually. I had a really good time with it. Um, can't. Wa- I hope it like gets a Blu-ray release or something, or like, at least somewhere that I can get to it. Because <laughs> sometimes that doesn't happen. I'll give it nine aunties' funerals out of ten. Yeah, I'm kind of keen to see this one again. Um, I think it might be something that um, I get a lot more out of watching it a second time. Not that I didn't, but I spent quite a lot of the time like sort of comparing like in my own head, which kind of took me out of it a little bit. But um, overall, I enjoyed it, and I'm glad that it exists. So eight aunties' funerals out of ten. Pretty mm-hmm. dark little rate in there, to be honest, Max. <laughs> Sometimes you need a bit of darkness. Mm. Speaking of which... A film that apparently a lot of people did not enjoy. But it's showing everywhere. Thank God. Robert Eggers has a movie that's shown, and you can actually watch it this time. Isn't that brilliant? (laughs) (laughs) Ah, finally. So we got The North Man. Yeah. And that's out now. It's finally out. You could go and um, see it at your local cinema. (laughs) You probably could. (laughs) You probably could. It's got a huge release because it's universal. Yeah. Ah, uh, oh yeah, no, I totally forgot about that. Like instantly, he's actually done all their move, um, all his movies. I think. To be fair, though, I noticed that you know, like when um the film was starting, there was like a million production companies behind it. Yeah. Is that like normal in the cinema now? It's just their thing. Yeah, some films have it. Do you not remember when we watched um Titan? Yeah, it had, had like, like a million twenty that, yeah. production companies at the beginning. I assume that's probably just like, I don't know, maybe that's just like a funding mm-hmm. thing or something. Like, it's easier to get a little bit from each. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah, it might be. Is it? There were quite a few. Yeah. Like Regency yeah. Enterprises, Perfect World Pictures, New Regency. I thought there was a Focus. Focus Features yeah. distributed it, yeah. Focus and Universal were the only ones that I actually remembered out of the the lineup that happened. Mostly because I actually, I thought, right, and I'm not going to lie to you guys, I thought it was like another trailer because I was yeah. like, oh, what's all this shit that's coming out? <laughs> You just showed the Northman title card on the, and you said it was a, what a fifteen? Yeah, why are you showing me another trailer? <laughs> yeah, no, I think <laughs> no, my <laughs> I think the bit that got me was that um, there was a bit where it was like, oh, these um trailers are suitable for whatever, and then they had the eighteen card at the bottom, and I thought, oh, so is this an eighteen? Because surely you wouldn't show an eighteen at a fifteen, and then the fifteen comes up, and I'm like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. I didn't quite understand that, but. I don't know whether it's an 18 somewhere else and it's a 15 here or I don't... Right, yeah. So anyway, The North Man. What it is was it? The North Man. Is it... What is it? What is it about? And is it any good? Who knows? We'll get into it. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if that was just the end of the conversation. Just who What do knows? you think? <laughs> See you on the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... I think the sad part is is that, like, I don't know, a lot of people just really don't like this, but then everyone on Letterboxd says that this is the best film ever made, mm-hmm. so, so I think about, it just about this guy, played by um, Alexander Skarsgård. Yep. He's called Amleth, he's a prince, and he's, he's kind of, he's being taught by his father, he's on the verge of being a man, um, mm-hmm. and his father is the king, played by uh, that the, the, the really famous guy, the um, Ethan Hawke. Ethan Hawke, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I fucking love Ethan Hawke. Yeah. Um, and he gets slain by his own brother. So um, the, the prince <laughs> Amleth, he runs away and he's like, fuck man. He's, he's, he's on his boat and he's sailing away. He's like, I'm going to get revenge. And it's basically a, a tale about uh, revenge and uh, yeah. uh, a life lived in hatred and revenge. Basically. And it's also Vikings. It's like There's John Wick l- but with Vikings. Oh my god, it actually is. It's John Wick but yeah. with Vikings. I hadn't considered that as even like yeah a, a, a premise at all. <laughs> it's like yeah, it's like Nordic <laughs> John Wick. If John Wick cared about like the, the moral and emotional implications of yeah. like if this was set in a different time period. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> and um, base level thoughts. It's good. Yeah. Who who have guessed it? This guy only makes good movies. Um, yeah, it's his third movie, and all of them have been fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, the Witch is like my favorite horror movie of like the last thirty years. Um, 
mm-hmm. and I loved the lighthouse also. So I went into this with like incredibly high expectations and was not even remotely disappointed. I yeah. had no thoughts. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> that's that. Yeah, I think this is like so much my type of movie. I yeah. think like with the setting and um, it's it's a lot about like um overcoming hatred and like choosing uh love over hate it was like um a, a lot was repeated in this movie about like um choosing between uh love for your kin or hatred for your enemies mm-hmm. i thought that was really um a really good through line with throughout the whole movie is like this guy who's lived his entire life trying to basically building up to avenge his father but like it's, it's clearly not going to go his way if like he's just living his life through through this myopic lens of like I need to avenge my father for something that happened when I was a child. Well, to be fair, his dad was very adamant that he would live in shame if he didn't avenge him. Exactly. Yeah, and I think that's <laughs> that's where like a lot of um like themes of like masculinity come into the movie. It's like so entrenched in that. We're like um what is it like his father like chastises him or something mm-hmm. for like crying or yeah. um, it's like, like this your, whole thing with, yeah, yeah, it's like crying is a weakness. Um I I felt like there was a part in um the movie Stalker where he says um that you shouldn't be hard and tough because hard tough things break and very easily but like if you're soft you can like you can flow a bit more and like you you're easily a bit more moldable and I've I got like that as like a big theme of this entire movie. I like that. Mm-hmm. I feel that that's a nice little message to take away from all the stuff that's happening in this mm. movie. There and was like a lot of yeah, stuff. <laughs> He's basing his entire thing on like fate. It's like this is my fate to like avenge my father, mm-hmm. but nothing happens without him willing it to. And I found that to be pretty interesting. There's um a part where like Bjork has a very short scene where she says you're gonna battle this guy, your your uncle, on like a lake of fire. Mm. So so yeah, that's your fate. And he has the choice of whether to do that or not, but he eventually chooses to do it. And it's never like um. It's never surprising, but it's also like it's so obvious that it's going to happen, but in a good way. Like the entire time, yeah. It's like these decisions are being made. Um, Just to know that he's going to go straight because to that. he's like this yeah. kind of person, you know. Yeah, plot-wise, I think the film it's not something I've never seen before. It's quite similar to Macbeth, um, mm. and it's yeah. John Wick, remember? And <laughs> also, The Lion King, because that's loosely based on Macbeth. It's basically the same plot yeah. as that film. But it's interesting seeing the way Eggers um, kind of executes that, and he does it in a very, very unique and different way. Like, although this is a Viking movie, um, I don't think it's like any other Viking movie I've ever seen. No, I mean, personally, I felt like you could have taken the Viking stuff out of it, and it probably would have felt like the same movie. Not, not like you know what I mean. Like in terms of the story, like it didn't have to be about Vikings, but. It yeah, was. I think like half <laughs> you know of it's mean? just like a really, really brutal, violent um, revenge tale. And then God, the other half focuses on it in a much more spiritual way, um, mm. much more psychologically. And that's kind of, that oh, was probably uh, my favourite yeah, stuff. Yeah, I like the, the psychological stuff. It was very like, um, it was good to get inside like their heads. You know what I mean? Like it was kind of torturous in a way as well, to be mm. honest. It's like using that time period as a vehicle to tell people a story that's mm-hmm. very um, relevant to modern culture. I think we got that yeah. a lot with like the last duel as well. Yeah, um, I think that's why I like, you can take yeah. these different themes and put it onto like how we're living now and try to learn something from it. I think. Yeah, so it's they like were a, very like. It's like a relevant story, isn't it? Yeah, but... it's like men were men back in those days, and they went off to fight and and die in and the die war and like you weren't like a real man if you didn't die in battle it's, um... it's true if you didn't die in battle you were a shit <laughs> yeah and that's why i got like so much out of the masculinity in it and like the fault in being mm. too hard and too vengeful um that being said whenever they did fight it was fucking sick it was to be fair <laughs> i'm not even gonna lie <laughs> you think ah. Oh, you know, they don't need to be fighting. And then every time they were fighting, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't need to do this, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I'm not going to stop you if you do. Yeah, there's like that really, really cool bit that's in the movie that was in the trailer mm-hmm. where someone throws a spear at him and he just like 
catches it and throws it back right, in. Uh, and uh, that uh, bitch is, is so insane. No, but, <laughs> I think what made, it, what made it slightly better but slightly worse was that, like, everyone else in the cinema seemed to have been, like, paid attention to the trailer because they were mm. like, oh, that bit happened. But I turned around to Chris and I was like, oh, my fucking yeah. God. And he was like, what? <laughs> he and just started is, laughing. There, there, therein lies the downfall of trailers for me, at least. Yeah. When that happened in the trailer, I saw it when we were at, a cin- at the cinema one time. And that happened, I was like, fucking hell! <laughs> that was so cool. And it happened in the movie, I was like, saw that in the trailer. Yeah. See, I, see, I had the unbridled joy of not remembering the trailer, so therefore I did the whole, whoa, that was fucking cool. The trailer cool. <laughs> actually does not really give much away at all. It mm-hmm. only really shows like the first like half an hour of the film. See, this is the thing, I feel like a lot of people got really angry about it as well, because maybe they, uh, they tried to market it as more of a... Uh, Kill, kill, mm. action. They wanted yeah. more of an action movie from it. Viking, I mean, yeah. I understand why they would advertise it that way because mm. that's what sells. I don't know if they advertised it in a much more truthful way. That no idea. As many people would go see it because I know a lot. Yeah, a lot of people were like saying stuff like, "Oh, we watched it for like the first half an hour and then left because it's so boring and it's not." accurate to the trailer and all this other kind of stuff. Yeah, I saw some reviews say there's too much screaming and that made them leave. To be fair, there was, <laughs> too a, much there, there was a lot of screaming in it, to be fair. <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> well, I didn't These enjoy that. being murdered. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and it is like a lot of like, I guess that culture where it's mm-hmm. like, that's expression and that's um community, I guess. Oh yeah, right. like um, what was that review that was like, if I want... Um, if you love films about people being dogs, this is the film for you. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I actually do like <laughs> movies I, like, about... I actually like that because I've never seen that in a film before where people yeah. are like acting like a pack. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, when when, you know when there the, was that scene where <laughs> um, Ethan Hawke takes um, the kid into like this kind of cave place and mm-hmm. like they meet the the witch and um, they're basically like telling them to be wolves like they're howling like dogs and like eating out of bowls like dogs and i was like whoa my god (laughs) it's definitely trying to say something about like um again like how to be a man and like doing a way because that was like the same scene where like he he sheds a tear and like i think will and defoe takes the tear (laughs) from he says this is the last tear you will ever shed uh it will be given back to you when you most need it Mm -hmm. um I thought that all that was like so cool, um, and especially yeah. like in relation to this culture. I think um, that's quite a, a prevalent thing. Although I'm not somebody who knows so much about that type of culture with like the Icelandic and um, like Germanic and those kind of um, Nordic countries, I guess. Um, but there's nothing more manly than farting. But I know that, <laughs> yeah. But I know that Robert Eggers does know that, and I know that he does a lot of research when he makes these movies. That's why they're like so uh, deeply entrenched in like those kinds of like languages and like the language they use. You never doubt for a second that like they understand or like he understands. He also looks what super he's young, doesn't about, he? You know, well, Rob Eggers. Yeah, I, lo- I just I looked him up when we yeah, were he's like talking about this film. In his late thirties, I think. Yeah, he looks so young. He just looks like a dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah you like, like expect him to be like this grizzled old That's guy. That's I'm not gonna lie. He's like kind of over ancient texts and all this shit. You expect him to look like the witch in in this <laughs> movie, yeah. like the he witch. That was like, yeah, what he was just, that? He it just kind of um, looks like if you went to the pub and I'd seen this man, I'd yeah. go, "Oh, that looks like, like a geezer from like the pub." Looks like a fucking music lecturer yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck?" He talks like it as well. Like I've watched interviews with him, and he just like he seems really, really normal and calm. Saying that though, I feel like sometimes that's a testament to like you. You could just be a character mm-hmm. without having to be a character. You know what I mean? If you're gonna make a movie like this, I would prefer it to be very authentic to that yeah. time period. I want m- m- research to have gone into it because you have so many like medieval movies or like these kinds of um, ancient historic movies that like clearly are going for. Um, spectacle over substance um but i think he, he balances it very well actually speaking of that did anyone else enjoy the rune title cards as much as i did yeah they were so cool <laughs> i really hope they great. were real runes as well they had to be i wouldn't know but <laughs> definitely yeah and i like that they they're using you know actors and mm. um, consultants producers from uh, uh what is it like sweden and um like the nordic countries um 
obviously you got Alexander Skarsgård at, at the forefront of the movie. And I think he does a really brilliant job of it, just uh, playing this like this guy. You kind of I don't know if you want him to. You I mean you you kind of know you don't want anything from him, but you know what's going to happen to him. Yeah, and like he's kind of like he's not somebody to base yourself off. He's like a he's, he's kind of fucking everything up for himself really. for me he feels like an anti-hero yeah like yeah, you of. kind of appreciate him but you're kind of like oh for fuck's sake <laughs> yeah he, he does a lot of horrible stuff in yeah the movie. all all in the uh all in the name of vengeance yeah <laughs> that's definitely Macbeth. that is de- <laughs> yeah he's like i know i have to battle my uncle on on a lake of lava but like the volcano hasn't exploded yet so i'm just gonna fuck with him until then <laughs> I love that, the fact that he was like, I'm just going to play psychological, like, yeah. I'm just going to kill his men and, like, <laughs> poison them with mushrooms so they, like, kill themselves. Yeah. That was, like, horrifying. That was, that was fucking weird, man. Like, everyone's up at the top, like, fucking stabbing themselves in the neck and shit. And I was like, what on earth is going on here? And he's like, I'm just going to hide in this room so no mm. one can find me. And even all the actors who aren't <coughs> of that, <laughs> uh, those countries, I think, do a really good job, especially with, like, the accents and the, um, the dialect, I thought. Um, yeah, but... I liked um, Anya Taylor Joy a lot in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she it was, was great. Interesting seeing her do an accent in this film because it reminded me a lot of the New Mutants because she has mm-hmm. a very similar accent in that. But yeah. like this accent that like, actually feels a She's lot trying to more be Russian. Where is she from? Um, She's like English, I think. Uh. Let's see. I might be wrong. She I might could, be like I American. could find out. I literally have her. No, she's American. Oh, she's American. Like a British American. British American. Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. she was really good. Um, and yeah, the New Mutants does not do her justice. Um, I'm not even. I'm she's like, she's really going that. for it in this movie, you know. Yeah, you but know, that last accents, scene she's like, in, fucking it's all like hell. The different languages, they're all speaking, um, and they're primarily speaking in English. Um, but then when they go into like the songs, they're doing more, uh, I guess Swedish, I think. Um, and all the music is fantastic. It's really good music. Yeah. Um, it's very Max's cup of tea. This like, it is like so Nordic much my Celtic thing, kind of yeah. thing. Or like the throat singing that they do. Yeah. It's so cool. There's um a guy, <laughs> the guy who played the he witch who like just tells him to get the sword. Is um played by Ingvar Sigurdsson, and he learned to throat sing for the role. I think that's so cool. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, like I I love that bit like where an they're like interesting thing to do with your voice. I, so, I don't know how they do it, but like. I, I don't know, I thought one of the coolest bits was where they were like, just before they um, did all the, like, the wolf pack shit, and he's like singing to Odin and shit, and I was like, this is cool, man. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was like, if this film was just this, I would sit here and just watch it. Just like this fire burning, and everyone's just like, sitting around this fire yeah. while he's singing about, I don't know, being a man and honour and all that other kind of stuff that you sing about, yeah. Being a pack. I know we took the piss out of the good dinosaur on one of the last episodes. <laughs> what? For, because of the because of the howling that they do in that. But this is actually you understand well, what it's going like for. I felt like this had a purpose. <laughs> this yeah. howling had a purpose. The good dinosaur had no howling purpose. There was no bloody wolves in that movie. I'm not getting into this again. I like the howling in this film. I I must admit though that um for the uh general public i do agree that this film is quite like loud mm-hmm. but that's just, that's just me i think maybe that might just be a problem because obviously it's going to be loud like yeah people like dying and shit all over the place but yeah i think when, it can be quite uh, overwhelming so... when you're in a cinema and obviously the volume's like three times louder than like you would watch at home it is a little bit much yeah there was a group that's of the only people, thing i'm gonna say i'm um, sat behind us who Fuck. are very, very vocal throughout mm. the movie. Fuck you um, for bringing them up, by the way. Narrating everything that happened. <gasps> Is he, he holding a sword? Yeah. Oh, look, she's got her ass out. Ooh. There was a point where he <laughs> killed a kid, and like from behind us, I just heard, he just killed him. I was like, <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> I just saw him do it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> you oh, saw, this film's um, weird. <laughs> and your Taylor Joy um, has a nude scene, and the bit that she... One of them was just like, I've waited an hour and a half for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, is that all? I think that's all they came yeah. in for because they were just like, this film's weird. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Why are you I here? remember there's um a shot towards the end of where he's like having a dream of someone riding into the gates of heaven, the Valkyrie. And, yeah, oh, and yeah, yeah. that happened, and this guy was like, "What the fuck was that for?" 
And I was just like thinking, why don't you just bring up? It gets brought up like loads of times. I swear, it does. It gets brought up straight away after as well. And like, I will be brought by the Valkyrie to the gates of Valhalla. Was it? And uh, uh, the other bit where uh, what shit ending? (laughs) (laughs) Shit ending. I'm like, really? (laughs) How else could it possibly have ended? That's what I thought. But then I don't know. They seem like the kind of guys that were just kind of there just to narrate the whole thing and piss off everybody that was around them. Because, like, even this guy was, like, he was, so this guy's talking to his mate, and even his mate started giving blunt answers, like, yep. He went, yeah. oh, that's dad, that's his dad's ring, innit? And he goes, yep. And it just stops <laughs> talking, because he's like, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> I got the feeling they were there just for an action movie. Mm-hmm. But then if it's... I mean, I don't blame them, though, because that's yeah, yeah, kind of what the trailer... Exactly, markets. like, you can't blame them for going into a film thinking, oh, this is going to be a cool action film, to find out that... It's not an action mm. film. Like, I'm not going to blame them for that. But what I can blame them for is talking throughout the whole fucking movie. Don't do that. It's annoying. Why? The only time I spoke was to, t- to turn around to Chris and go, is that Willem Dafoe? <laughs> <laughs> Why is his head like that? <laughs> no, it's because I, I thought it was him, but I wanted to like make sure it was him so I could follow the story better. And then all of a sudden you just hear him speak and I thought, I could have just not asked and like, waited 10 mm, seconds. Yeah, that bit was really creepy. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, well. Yeah, There's a lot of, I think, really creepy, like eerie stuff throughout the movie. It, I feel like, although this film isn't a horror movie, you can definitely tell this is a director who's very skilled in making horror movies. Sure, to be just, honest, like, so much tension. This atmosphere. is a horror film in its own right. Think about it. It's bloody terrifying. Yeah. I could spent quite a lot of it just kind of like... <laughs> I don't know if I got much from the horror, horror element, really. I wasn't never like scared. I never found it like creepy um, either. I was just... Um, I, I guess I was more enjoying it from like a drama perspective. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. But I guess that's how you... Yeah, you personally take it, isn't it? Uh, so, yeah. Like, there's like tones in it that... I don't know, because it, it's quite dark and... Very moody. I feel like there are aspects of it that are like terrifying, especially when, and I'm going to bring it up again, when you're burning a house down with loads of people in it and they're all screaming, that's pretty fucking terrifying. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. They pulled a come and see in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Which reminds me to never watch that movie because I, I didn't like it for the four seconds that it was on this film. <laughs> yeah, you would not like that movie. <laughs> I really liked um, Bjork in the movie. She was only in it for one scene. Yeah, that I was a shame. Her a scene shame. was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Was, or like, the makeup and like the headdresses yeah. and stuff. Design looks so cool. I'm just I'm glad to see her acting again because yeah. I'm a huge fan of her music. Um, and she acted like a couple times, but because of the experience and dancer in the dark, she just stopped. But Maybe that's why she's, she's only really one great. scene. Mm-hmm. Slowly building back. I hope up. it means that she's gonna be in more, but probably not. She might be. You you can't rule it out, can you? I don't know, yeah, I really liked her. Um, I thought, that was, like, weird. That was a weird scene. <laughs> just, just, like, um, all, like, the, the, the set design and the headdress and the, the costume design and the makeup, it's, like, freaky, man. It's, it's pretty freaky. Um, and I think she pulled off a really good performance just for the uh, short scene she was in. Um, and I think, like, all, all like the costume design is really fantastic, and it never felt like, and the set design and all that, and basically just all the 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 part about just what they were trying to portray with the movie it, it, with this culture, it never felt like they commodified it, or that or like it was their goal to commodify this culture. It's it seemed very authentic and respectful to me. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> Technically, I think it's probably Robert Eggers' best movie. Like. The set designs and costumes and like the visuals and everything, I think, is just really, really fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a higher scale. I, was, I, I don't know if I would say that it was like technically better. I guess like I want to know that he's always improving, and I guess like a bigger scale movie is a way to kind of show that in a in a certain way. Yeah. Because um, mm. his previous two movies were very, very self-contained, very yeah. claustrophobic. I think both of them were only set in like one small location, so mm-hmm. it's interesting seeing him do a film on such a huge scale. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, he's like a he's a master. He's a genius, honestly. Yeah, I think I'm just up for anything he's making. Um, and like the lighthouse, 
that's one of my favorite movies ever. I think that's an absolute masterpiece. Um, and this, I mean, I can't say that I was disappointed ever. I was like, I don't know what kind of expectations I had, but it was just like, it's such a different movie from his previous two movies that like, what can you really expect from it? Yeah. But at the same time, I, I can tell it was directed by him. Mm-hmm. I think it's definitely still got a lot of his identity, even if it is quite different. Definitely. And one small gripe I had, I don't know mm-hmm. like what happened to that teardrop. They were like, here's a teardrop. That's That'll it. Give it back You'll, to you. People right? give it back when like you most need it. But like, when did he? When Didn't did he, he cry at the it? end just before he died? I swear did there he? was a, there was like a single tear that fell when he died. It might have been. I swear to God, I could be wrong, Maybe. but I swear I to really God. Remember. He shed a single tear when he was like, okay, I'm dead now. I was just now. infuriated by the people who went, that's a shit ending. I <laughs> so didn't hear them. I, I, I genuinely didn't hear that, but I think it was because I was just doing, well, <laughs> towards the end of the film, I just sort of like started leaning forward because I was getting, because basically the further back I was, the more I could hear them. So if I leaned forward, I could hear <laughs> less of them. So I was like, I'm just going to lean this way. But um. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. I'm pretty sure he cried at the end. Yeah, but it was I like think the only problem I really have with the movie is I felt the pacing could be a little bit off at points. Mm-hmm. It did really feel its length. Um, it did. But that may be something that I don't feel on a second watch. It may, once I like actually know what but the But then again, like. right, remember, we all said that we needed a Wii at the end, so maybe it was just one of those yeah, things exactly that we were that. just like uh, impatiently waiting. Yeah. 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 That's why oh, I... I want to give it another watch before. <laughs> I think that's say something that's hundred percent a problem because everything feels so much longer when you have to wait to go yeah. to the toilet. I swear to God. <laughs> so maybe that could have been part of it. Like that might not have been mm-hmm. necessarily something you'll feel again, unless of course you need to wait again throughout the whole film. Like Max, didn't you say that you were holding it in like the whole time? Basically the whole time. I don't yeah. know how I could have. Done. Like you could have gotten up. <laughs> I could have, but I was like, no, I knew that something's going to happen. <laughs> That's what I was um towards like the, I think it was the last twenty five ish minutes. I thought, oh, I could get up now, but I'm gonna miss the whole purpose of this movie, and then it's just gonna be a waste of time because I'm gonna have to pay another five pound eighty just to come back in here and watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> so that could have been why it felt its length. I mean, I kind of yeah, I kind of felt its length, but it was also quite late in the evening. We had a really long day, and I was just basically dead. It's a pretty long movie. It's like two hours, 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, For me, that's a feat. It really is a feat. It is, yeah, definitely. (laughs) Well done, mate. You need to earn that runtime. And I think for what it's worth, it did. You know, Mm -hmm. I was never bored. I just thought. No. Yeah, Yeah, no, I wouldn't say I was ever bored. It was just, um, um, there were parts where I thought that I probably could have gone to sleep, but that's more... (laughs) <laughs> that's more a case of the like the... bored. I just wanted a nap. <laughs> oh, honestly, I was so, I was exhausted. Do you remember when we left? I literally I was barely alive. Yeah. So I mean, if this had been on like earlier, like I don't know, say we went at, like five o'clock or something, I think I would have had a an easier time watching it. But you know what? For what it's worth, I got through the whole thing without falling asleep. So mm-hmm. that says a lot about it. <laughs> and with that. Should we go on to ratings? Sure. What do we want to rate out of, boy? Teardrops. Cool. Teardrops. Right, let's just do this. Let's do this yeah, before this I get all meta. it's a fantastic movie. Robert Eggers is, like, up there as one of my favourite directors around, like, of, like, recent directors, I mean. Um, and I think, on a grand scale, this is, like, a really epic, huge movie. And it's just fantastic, I think. Maybe I'll like it more on the second viewing, but um, for now, I think I'll give it nine teardrops out of ten. Really looking forward to his Nosferatu remake. If it ever yeah. gets made. That'd be sick. <laughs> it's a really good um, movie from the 20s also. So I'm, I'm excited to see what he does with it. I'm hoping that he actually does get to make it, and I hope this movie does well enough so that he gets to make what he wants to make, because he's, he's, an, he's an interesting fellow. I'll say that for sure. Um, and yeah, one last thing about the marketing: the poster fucking sucks. Yeah, There's it like, does. Y- it's supposed it says Dive. nothing about the movie's vibe. It's just I don't know. Put all the known actors on into it on a, on a pyra- in a pyramid, and then, and then then people will know that Ethan Hawke is in it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> That's the only thing that sells there. Terrible poster. Stop making these terrible posts that they all look the same. It's boring. It's they really do. boring. Um, 
Loved it. I'll watch it again. I'll get the 4K. Anytime, man. Um, And I, I just love, like, the messaging of it. I think I got a lot from, like, just, uh, the, the masculinity of it and the toxicity of that. The toxicity of being hard and um, tough and all, all, this, all this stuff uh, you expect with, like, with ancient warrior tribes and all that. Um, Slav men fighting men over the memory of other men. And, um, it's just, um, yeah, I get a lot from that. And I think it's um, a really interesting movie. I'll probably get a bit more from it when I watch it a second time. But for now, I'll give it a uh, nine teardrops out of ten. I really love nice. it. Yeah, I really like this movie. Um, I don't really have anything to compare it to in terms of his like other films. So maybe I'll finally watch The Lighthouse. <laughs> or oh, maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe I won't even enjoy it because it's nothing like this film apparently. But um, you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Ah, see, I like, I like the prize indeed. Um, so I'm gonna give it nine teardrops out of ten. Epic. <laughs> yeah. Maybe one day we'll do a Robert Eggers marathon and explore it a bit deeper. Yeah, he's got enough movies now. We can do it on the podcast. We can put him on the podcast list. Woo! In five years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when it <laughs> ever comes up. That's that then. A little bonus episode for y'all. Don't get mad at us if it was bad. Next episode, yeah. we've got the one we've all been waiting for. High School Musical, the musical, the series, season one. We're gonna watch it. I like That's how you gonna be was awesome. like season one, as if it, that was like that was like the question. Like, is it season one? Technically, it's called High School Musical, the musical, the series, auditions. Because that's what it says in the opening credits. Right. Oh, sorry. Right. The High School Musical, the movie, the series, the series, the musical, the musical, the TV series, the auditions. Yeah. All right, we get it. The title's really fucking stupid and long, right? We get it, Listen we get it. next week for an in-depth discussion about High School Musical, the musical, the series, the audition, season one, take two. <laughs> <laughs> we got social media. We, yeah, we do. And it's maybe you're on YouTube right now. Wouldn't that be crazy? Then you'd already know that our YouTube channel is called The Sunday Movie Marathon. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have guessed? Um, we got Twitter at Sunday Movie Pod. Facebook is at Sunday Movie Marathon. And Letterboxd is at Sunday MM. Capital S. <gasps> capital M. M. Any final words? Okay. I, I, I just love that head bop. It was Chris is doing <laughs> the chicken head bop because he has nothing. Yeah. Just nod. Okay. Just I'm trying to survive the day. That's your own fault, my man. Brilliant. Well, <laughs> happy surviving the day. Wow. See you next time when we survive another. Bye. Oh, baby, a triple. Oh, yeah.